Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Mouse Club podcast. My name is Marissa, and I am the host of this podcast. So welcome. Hopefully, you are returning. If this is your first time, welcome to the Mouse Club. I hope that you guys enjoy. This week's episode, I thought we should talk about some of the new guidelines for when the parks reopen, and I wanted to share some of my thoughts as a former cast member and a former team member um, and kind of give some of my opinions and feedback on some of these new regulations that are in place. So I hope that you guys really enjoy this episode. Um, just be aware this is all uh, what we are expecting. <laughs> there hasn't been any official statement by the Walt Disney Company or by Universal. So right now we're just kind of, I'm going to be talking about some of the regulations that the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force has laid out. Um, some of the government orders, um, some of the other things like that, and how the parks have responded so far. So I hope that you guys enjoy this episode. As usual, I wanted to start with a little news segment. And of course, this episode is going to be a lot of news because um, I'm basically just talking about news the whole episode um, and talking about some of the different things that are going to be put in place as the parks open up. So really the news that I have is just some new Disney Plus things and things like that. So the first thing that I have to talk about is that Rise of Skywalker is going to be released on Disney Plus on May the 4th and I'm so excited. There had been some speculation the past couple weeks about Rise of Skywalker hitting Disney Plus on May the 4th because it is Star Wars Day but we still weren't sure and I have been waiting for this one to come out ever since I saw it in the movie, so I'm super, super excited to see it when it comes on Disney Plus on May the 4th. So mark your calendars, guys. It's going to be a good one. They also just announced that there are going to be new profile icons on Disney Plus. Those are actually available now, and it's a lot of throwbacks like That's So Raven, Scrooge McDuck, Sunny with a Chance. So if you're into any of those, those are some new profile icons that you can get from Disney Plus. Also, Disney has been very generous lately with their recipes that they've been releasing online. They released their Dole Whip recipe, and this week they released their famous beignet recipe. I have not tried either of those, so I cannot give you my feedback, but I've heard that they're pretty good. And oh, also I forgot the Jack Jack Cookie Num Nums. So if you'd like to check that out, that's going to be over on the Disney Facebook page. It's literally just called Disney. Which, speaking of Disney Facebook pages, guys... <laughs> Can we talk about all of the fake pages that pretend that they're doing Disney giveaways and how many people share them? Oh my goodness, it is just ridiculous. <laughs> if you want to know if it is a real Disney giveaway, you should go to the Facebook page, see if there's a little blue check mark to be verified, and also check the title of the page. I've seen so many that's like Disney Magic Kingdom with like two M's or with a period at the end and people somehow still believe it. But in the end, those end up becoming like a completely different page and they just do those giveaways just to gain a ton of followers. So just a little tip for you guys. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some of the new guidelines that have been laid out for reopening the parks after the end of the coronavirus. I just shouldn't technically say end because I really don't think that there's going to be a quote-unquote end to the coronavirus. Um, I guess I should say as restrictions lessen, as the parks reopen, what we can kind of expect from the parks, what they're going to look like, and how different things are going to be really um, with operations and different things like that. So anyway, um, I got this information from the Hollywood Reporter. So this all came from the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force which is in Orlando. So that could be different for different parks around the world, like Disneyland in California or Disneyland Paris, or of course the Asian parks. And of course, we don't know anything really about the Disney Cruise Line or anything like that. So this is really just about Orlando. This would comprise both the Disney parks and the Universal parks. So that's kind of interesting to see how they're going to have to function in the future. So I hope that you guys enjoy this episode. So first off, it's going to be broken down into phases. So in phase one, the park is going to be allowed to operate at 50% park capacity. And in phase two, the park is going to be able to operate at 75% park capacity. It's not clear when those park phases are going to be introduced. Um, there's been a lot of speculation 
you can do reservations for Disney right now starting June 1st. Of course, that can always change. So nobody's really 100% sure what that's going to look like when the parks are actually going to reopen. And then who knows how long it will take from to get from phase one to phase two to back to operations as normal. So we're really not sure. But those are how they're planning to do it. So phase one, 50%, phase two, 75%, and then phase three would be operation back to normal. Some of the guidelines that they've laid out is that they want to have tape marking six feet apart for people standing in line waiting, which is really interesting because um, it's, if, I'm just curious like how families are going to work, what size the groups have to be to be in like the same bubble I guess <laughs> especially with the summer months coming up there's a lot of Brazilian tour groups we know they're not gonna be able to stay six feet apart so I'm really curious to see how that's gonna play out especially in a large family like if there's a family with a lot of kids I don't know how this is exactly gonna work and how it's going to be enforced but I guess the number one thing that they are caring about is that the tape is on the floor, so at least they are trying to get them to stay six feet apart. Something else I find interesting is that the staff is going to be regularly required to wipe down surfaces. However, I just don't know how protective that's going to be. Of course, it's really great to be able to lay out as much disinfectant and as much wiping down as possible. But in these lines, I think it's going to be really hard to wipe down any cue stanchions or what's the thing called that you hold on to it's not a railway is it called a railway <laughs> those little things you hold on to while you're in the queue um I just don't perceive that being cleaned more than two times a day because there's no way that they're going to be able to get in through all of those people and wipe those down that's from my own personal experience of working in attraction when the queue is completely full, there's not really a way to get to some of those areas, especially if you're also trying to maintain six feet distance apart from different people and groups. Um, it's That would be just tremendously hard. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to play out as well. I really can only see it happening two times a day, which is before they open and before they close. They could probably wipe down like a lot of other surfaces, but I don't see those stanchions in the queue getting wiped down throughout the day because there's not really a way unless they completely emptied the queue out. And that's not really going to happen unless an attraction is experiencing a downtime. So I'm not really sure about that one, but it does say that they're regularly required to wipe down surfaces. It also says that staff 65 and older are going to be encouraged to stay home. So that is really unfortunate and sad because a lot of the staff are a lot older. Um, just speaking from personal experience when I worked at the parks, there were a lot of people who I worked with that were a lot older. It also says that all employees are going to be required to wear face masks. Something I find really interesting about that is that a number of Disney employees would not be allowed to wear face masks. For example, face characters and characters that are fur characters so for example disney princesses and any characters wearing heads or um you know different materials that cover their face which is called fur of characters i don't know how they would be able to wear face masks especially the princesses and anybody who's a face character so i'm really curious to see how that works as well i don't know if they're just gonna cut off meet and greets for a while but that just seems like it would take out a huge element of the parks so it would really just be like rides and shows but again we have to wonder if all staff means face characters for parades and shows as well because they are pretty close to guests if we're being honest especially for parades so i'm very curious <laughs> i'm curious to see how that works out those are the only people I can really um, see struggling with the face masks. I think everybody else would have a decent shot of wearing face masks throughout their shift. If you guys can think of any other employees that might struggle to wear face masks that I'm not thinking of, let me know um, in the comments on my latest Instagram post. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Next, they are saying that touchless hand sanitizer stations are going to be required all around the parks. They said at like attraction entrances at the entrance to the theme parks basically all throughout the parks so that's definitely good to have the hand sanitizer out 
it'll be interesting to see how often they're going to have to change it. I feel so bad for the custodial team members that are going to probably be on top of that. But that was something that they were rolling out before the parks officially closed as well. Um, I talked about that in one of my previous episodes that they were having um, hand washing stations and hand sanitizer stations throughout the park. So it shouldn't be too hard to implement those because there's probably a lot that are already in the parks and hygiene is always great. So (laughs) that is going to be super good to have those. I hope they actually keep them after this whole pandemic is over because that would be super convenient for sure. They also said that staff are going to be required to have temperature checks whenever they walk in. I've also read rumors that they're thinking about having guests be required to do temperature checks when they walk in. And I actually follow somebody on Instagram. Her name is Molly and she lives in Shanghai. But on her story, she's been posting like this camera where it basically takes your temperature. And I find that so interesting because I feel like that would be so helpful in the parks to be able to take your temperature just using a camera and I think a lot of places are actually starting to roll this out governments are starting to use this and implement this and that would be so helpful in the theme parks because it would obviously be nearly impossible to check everyone's temperature with like a face swipe or something like that in a um what's the word in a fast and efficient fashion so (laughs) the camera would definitely be helpful and I think it would be really important to do the guests as well as the staff when they come in um because there's no telling who's going to bring in the sickness. So that would definitely be super, super helpful. Um, Those are all of the guidelines that have been laid out so far. I definitely think that they will definitely help, but I am still worried about my friends um, and everybody who does work in the theme parks and everybody that will be visiting the theme parks. It's just, there's no telling The thing that really interests me too is travel restrictions are still up for a number of countries and also for the United States. So I don't really know how many guests Disney is going to get just strictly from the United States alone because I know a lot of countries, especially with the summer coming up, we're planning on having trips. Like I said, Brazil is a huge, huge, huge country that comes during the summertime. If you've ever been in the summer, I'm sure you've seen Brazilian tour groups there before. So I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I really hope that the parks can open safely and effectively. It's just, there's a lot of gray area for everybody involved around the world. And obviously people are protesting. Um, there's a lot of differences in opinions here. But I feel like we can all agree that the theme parks are a place that definitely passes around germs a lot. When I worked in the theme parks my first two years, I was sick almost every day. Literally, I was sick all the time. I can't even tell you how many times I went to the doctors. And a few times it was because of dehydration, because you're just using so much of your energy um in the parks and actually once I went because I was drinking too much water and I didn't have enough electrolytes but um I got a lot of sicknesses as well from all over the world and I think that that's helped my immune system a lot now because I've been exposed to so much but it's definitely when you're a cast member or a team member you get exposed to so much I mean you're checking lap bars all day you're you're passing people their ice cream and touching their hand There's just so many different ways that you can contact a virus or a sickness, especially checking lap bars. There's no way they're going to be able to wipe those lap bars off and seats off multiple times a day. That would probably cause a downtime for a number of rides. So I'm very interested to see how this all plays out. And when Disney releases their official guidelines, I'll definitely be talking about that in a future episode. Um... I also wanted to say that Shanghai Disney is starting to make plans to open up. I saw on a girl I follow, like I said earlier, her name is Molly. If you want to check her out, her Instagram is at Molly, M-O-L-L-A-Y. But she posted a video of Disney, Shanghai Disneyland um, doing test runs for fireworks. And that is super interesting <laughs> to see when they're going to open up soon. I love following her page if you're interested in following her because she lives in China. So it's interesting to see from her perspective um, how they're starting to get back to normal over there. 
Um, but I find it really hopeful that they're testing fireworks and hopefully that means that we will see the parks opening soon. Um, I would expect the Asian parks to open first because they've been dealing with this for way longer than we have. But who knows at this point, um, there's so many cast members and team members anxious to get back to work. Of course, they don't want to get sick. None of my friends want to get sick, but we'll see. I know Disney is losing, I think they said something like $40 million a day with these parks being closed, which is insane. So it's sad, but I know they're probably going to have to open their doors sooner rather than later. And unfortunately, that probably means that a number of my friends are going to get sick, um, which also makes me think about health insurance because a lot of people that I know don't have health insurance that work in the parks, um, which is also sad because <laughs> uh, it's just it's just really hard to think how many of my friends might be worse off when the parks reopen. So anyway, guys, um, those are just some of my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say on my latest Instagram post. And I hope that you guys did enjoy this episode. I hope it was informative and I hope that you enjoyed me sharing my thoughts with you all. And anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Like I said, please follow me at the Mouse Club Podcast on Instagram. I'm going to be posting a lot of polls, asking you guys for your opinions, um, asking you guys for your stories. So please, please, please check that out and follow me so we can chat <laughs> and start talking about future episodes. And um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Mouse Club Podcast. To find us on Instagram, follow us at the Mouse Club Podcast. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Mouse Club Podcast or on our website, themouseclubpodcast.com to find all of our episodes, links to our social channels and our YouTube channel, which will be coming soon. To follow our host, Marissa Potts, that's me. Check me out on YouTube, Marissa Potts, on TikTok at marissa.potts, on Instagram at little miss Maris, M-R-S Maris. Thanks so much for listening. See you next week. Bye.